What's going on guys, Lewis here and uh, due to high demand I'm going to be bringing you a driving video of my new A1 um, so yeah, as I said, quite a few people have been in the comments saying yeah let's have a first drive um, want to see a video behind the wheel obviously it's not going to be a first drive, I've actually put over a thousand miles on this car I've been driving it so much and I've had it for about just under a month um, so yeah, I've got a good idea of how everything works um, so I can give quite a detailed um, explanation as well um, tell you how the car feels. I've driven quite a few Audis, I've, I mean I've owned a TT, I've had an A3 for ages, so I can show how that sort of compares as well. So yeah, I'll stop the waffling now, and yeah, let's jump in. So, behind the wheel of the new Audi A1, um, first impressions of the car, um, it's got a really, really nice build quality inside. I mean, it compares to sort of the Mini, really, um, with the old um, Audi A1, or the predecessor to this, that was really brought out and it was the only car that could rival the Mini Cooper. Um, I mean, I think they matched the Mini in every way possible but also excelled in some places as well. Um, and then also they've brought out the new Mini as well. And now that sort of has gone past the old A1, but now with the launch of this new model, I think it's probably better than the Mini. Um, from the offsets, getting in the car, starting up, you're um, greeted with a nice Audi virtual cockpit, um, which comes standard on the A1 there's no analog dials anymore i think they're now sort of dying out you can opt for a bit of a bigger screen um on the in the center of the dashboard if you upgrade to the technology pack which sets you back about 1650 pounds um so if you're doing a pcp finance um probably roughly around 40 pound a month that would set you back um, but that gives you the satellite navigation in front of you as well um, which i had on the a3 um, and i really like that option i mean I think it's the best thing Audi do to be honest. I mean, it's a bit pricey on the A1 to be honest with you, but definitely does change the car. It's not essential, um, but it does change the car. I mean, I'm not got this car for too long, so I didn't opt for the technology pack, but the virtual cockpit works fine. I mean, you can see your general driving data. You can see your miles per gallon, stuff like that, long-term memory, driving assist, energy consumption, stuff like that. A bit of traffic let's go the other way um, but yeah it does work it does work really good onto the driving dynamics of the car now over the previous one it's a lot better as it's a bigger car now it's lower um, a bit wider um, it's replaced the three-door a3 really essentially obviously it's not taken the place off the a3 but they've stopped making the three-door a3 now and this sort of kind of fills in that size bracket um, Everybody looks at the car surprised that it's an A1 and they think it's the new A3. Um, but no, it's, it's just an A1. And being an A1, it's sort of Audi's entry level car. Um, but I definitely wouldn't think of it as the worst Audi of the bunch. I mean, this car is probably, if you was considering the current A3, I'd consider this as well because it's a really, really solid car. Um, a lot better than the predecessor. It handles the motorway well. It does everything really. And the engine I've got in this is the one liter 116 um, PS, which is badged on the back as a 30 TFSI. They do do this engine in the A3 as well, but in the A3 it can come across a bit sluggish. I've had that engine in an A3 before as well as the 1.5. And if you get an A3, I definitely, definitely recommend the 1.5. But with this engine in this, it's perfect for the car. It's nippy. Um, when you're around sort of back streets, stuff like that, you only really notice it when you're putting your foot down. Say you're doing about 50 miles an hour, then you put your foot down, that's when you notice it and it does sound a bit like a hairdryer. But other than that, it's um, pretty fine to be honest. In regards to handling, it goes around corners a lot better now as it's a bit more planted. It really does handle the road well. At the moment I'm driving in um, individual mode, so I have the steering on dynamic, but then I have the engine on efficiency. I mean, I do a lot of driving 
and I don't really brakes the car. So when I'm not putting my foot down, I just think, what's the point? I just leave it in efficiency. Um, but yeah, when I'm in a hurry or um, I'm doing a bit of a shorter journey or I'm a bit local, I'll put in dynamic. Um, but I won't drive with the gearbox in S because I believe it revs too high unless you're racing and this is not a car that you're going to be really thrashing around. Um, I just leave it in drive, so uh, D, and with the setup in dynamic really. On to the other modes that this car has. You've got, as I said, you've got an efficiency mode, which you get the most out of the engine. You can like coast and whatnot. Um, and you can do all this by selecting the drive select button. You've also got an auto mode as well. If you put that car in auto, the car will sort of work out how you are driving in your driving style, and it will change the car to suit um, suit what it feels best is for you. I mean, if you're, as I said, if you're driving a bit more sporty, it'll tighten the steering wheel up and uh, make the gear changes a bit more sharper, rev a bit longer. But if you're driving, plowing around town, it'll probably leave it in a nice, comfortable mode of light steering. Um, so it's not too much hassle to drive. It does have quite a few safety features on the car as well, um, which I have come across once, um, which is the Audi PreSense. If you do come quite close to a car, I'm not going to demonstrate it, at uh, quite a speed, it will warn you, it will give you a loud beep, and it will also start applying the brakes for you. I mean, it, it's just a safety feature. I mean, Audi are putting it on standard on most of their cars now. It does really help, it does, I'm not going to lie, I don't think it's a gimmicky feature. As I said, I've come across it once before and it's helped me, it alerted me that I was coming too close to the car, gave me enough time to actually start applying the brakes and yeah, stop me from a collision. Also, it's got lane assist. Um, some people like it, some people hate it. Don't think that the car is just going to completely drive itself. Um, it doesn't do that. So even if you're driving a lane and you start swerving, the steering wheel will vibrate, it will keep you in the lane. Um, but obviously if you indicate then it knows you're changing lane so it will just um, allow you to change the lane without giving any annoying vibrations or anything like that. So when you're on the motorway and you're driving you can let go of the steering wheel and it will actually keep you in the lane. Um, I find it works quite late, I mean just when you're a tad over the lane then it will start pulling you back. Um, but once your hands are off the steering wheel for too long it will beep and alert you to put your hands on the steering wheel and take over. Um, onto the interior really, I think the interior is um, a really nice place to be. The screen's tilted to you a bit more. It is very driver's focused. The screen in the middle is slightly tilted towards the driver, slanted towards the driver, sorry. And it is easy to use. When I first got in this car, coming from the old MMI system, that swivel wheel, I, it did take a bit of getting used to, I'm not going to lie. But literally after driving, for about 20 minutes, I was sort of used to it. You know where stuff is, and you can um, use Apple CarPlay and stuff with these. I normally just drive with Apple CarPlay. I'm, I don't really see that MMI side of things. I'm just on the Apple CarPlay, which is the same across many different brands. Um, but it just suits my my um, just suits my lifestyle more. I mean, with listening to music, um, making phone calls without using the handset on your ear so you don't get pulled over and be a dangerous a danger to other drivers. If you want to know more about the interior and the exterior of this car then head over to my other video. I'll leave a link in the description and also be a pop-up at the end of the video. Um, so have a it's a full walk around review of the car that I'm currently in. Um, but in in regards to this car, the only options I have on this is privacy glass and it's nest line in Masano red. I mean I've got no other options like as I was mentioning earlier You've got the flat bottom steering wheel. You can also get some nice interior lighting. Um, I mean, the seats are really comfortable. They're sort of part leather. You've got leather in the bits which will sort of wear and tear, which is good. Um, but I think the half seats, even if I was getting um, quite an expensive car, I'd go for like half Alcantara, half leather. Um, full leather, I just feel is too cold in the winter and too hot in the summer. Um, but yeah, this car definitely just works a treat. It's a fantastic drive. I mean, the only downside I can think of really is maybe the road noise. Um, it's quite noisy. It's noisier than you'd expect in a car of this value. I mean, they do start from around 19,000. By the time you select the S line and whatnot, it does take the price up to about 22,000, which is what this car is brand new. Um, so 
it is quite a pricey car, but I mean, it is a car that can do everything. I mean, when you're moving on to A3s, you're probably looking at, for an A3 with this sort of spec, you're probably looking at about 28,000 pound. I mean, don't get me wrong, you can spec this car up to um, quite ex quite a extravagant amount for an A1. I mean, you can go near 30,000 pound for this car, um, but I definitely wouldn't do that. In regards to entry choices, you have the one liter, which I'm driving now, the 30 TFSI, uh, which I touched on earlier. You've also got the 35 TFSI, which is a 1.5 petrol with 150 brake horsepower. And also, they're bringing out a competition line which is 200 brake horsepower, 2 litre um, TFSI. Um, it's not a Quattro. Um, I don't know if they are going to bring out an S1 yet, but there have been talks about it. So we'll just have to wait and see for that. But I'm interested to see how the, um, the competition line handles, to be honest, because 200 brake horsepower in a car this light to the front wheels. Um, expecting a bit of wheel spin, but we'll see sort of how, how the, um, the driver dynamics is set up. But that is, um, I think, going to be quite a successful car. I mean, the S1 didn't do too popular because I think the reason being was because they only come out in manual. But I believe this one's automatic now. I mean, with the old one, they come fit the Quattro system and the automatic system in the car that small. In regards to the comfort of this car, right now I'm on quite bumpy back roads and is handling just how any other car would handle, really. It's nothing nothing too special but nothing too shabby at the same time when you do enter dual carriageways and motorways the car does handle very good um, you think you're in a bigger car as i touched on earlier it's just the road noise which i find a bit annoying um, i'm not sure why i believe it's probably where they've cut back on cost where the, i mean the car's quite expensive as it is but um, that's probably one of the areas where they cut back on um, to make the car the price that it is efficiency of the car the fuel is excellent whatever it says is left in the tank it will pretty much do driving around town i mean at the moment i'm averaging 36.2 to the gallon and on a long journey you can get high 50s to the gallon on this car i mean the engine is crazy yeah as i said efficient and as i said quite sporty as well you can put your foot down and the car will go as you see but nothing special don't expect um, RS or S performance from this car. On to my overall opinion of this car, would I recommend this car to somebody in the market for a small everyday car? 100%. Would I recommend this car to a first time driver? 100% in the 30 TFSI. I mean, the 35 TFSI, the 1.5 petrol can be a bit of a handful for a first car and insurance um, but yeah definitely recommend the one litre um, I mean the manual is good as well I've driven the manual the manual gearbox is a joy to use does make the car quite fun um, so yeah definitely recommend this car uh, in regards to the back seats say for instance if you had maybe one kid I'd recommend it two kids I'd maybe look at going towards the A3 and above in the Audi range or something like the size of a Golf but the boot's quite big on the car as well as you see in my video that I've done before. So yeah, definitely recommend this car. If you can, get yourself out, have a test drive. I'm very surprised by it. It's exceeded me, my expectations in every way, performance and practicality. So yeah, definitely, definitely recommend this car. Right guys, that brings my video on the new Audi A1 to an end. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, see next um, or anything you liked about the video anything you want to see improving and also we did smash 100 subscribers so I'd like to say thank you for that so just keep subscribing and also I'm going to mention the winner of my video I did do sort of a random comment selector so Henry Burnett I will be sending you an S-line keyring so congratulations so I'll get in contact with you and I'll send you one of them over um, so you're subscribing for more content on some cars um, any, anything more you'd like to see on this as well or any other cars mainly Audis um, I'll try to get hold of some and I'll do a video on them so I'm going to try and upload I say once a week so far I'll try to do a bit more um, but got a few things on at the moment so yeah thanks for watching and